Welcome everybody to the Mark No Free Head Coaches Show. As always, joined every week by the head coach of Sacred Heart Football, Mark No Free. And coach, we're going to begin with something I know you're ready to put behind you, and that was uh, the battle, your successful battle against cancer and the No Tackles Cancer game. The support you saw from the university and the players. Again, I know you're ready to move on, but one last time they showed that support uh, for your courageous battle. So, how was that? It was great. You know, it was uh, it was really good to. You know, Chris did a good job setting it up with uh, the Colon Cancer Alliance out of uh, D.C. and Stephanie who came up for the game. And, uh, you know, to see all the support and the money that we donated back to the Colon Cancer Alliance was great. And that meant a lot to me to have my team, you know, my family and, and the school and the university behind me 100 percent. And it goes a long way and uh, says a lot about who we are and what we, you know, what we really care about here. Absolutely. It was a very special moment. And so now you can move on after all that hard work and, uh, Paid the attention, of course, to the rest of the season. And unfortunately, this year it will not result in a league crown. Back-to-back -back titles uh, for your program was one great run. But this year it will be somebody else. You still have a winning season within reach, as well as you have an effect on how this league's going to play out. So mm -hmm. how do you use that as motivation for the rest of the way? Well, I think, it, you know, we talked about it as a team, and I addressed the team about it. That, you know, this will be the first time if we can win their next two to go three straight years with a winning record, and we haven't done that since 2003. Uh, which is a long time and it's important to the seniors not only did they win you know two NEC championships but they can have three consecutive winning seasons uh, which is a big deal in college football we talk about it all the time it's hard to win college football games and uh, when you can do that and, and be above 500 um, it says a lot about your team and you know like I said everybody gets hit with different uh, types of adversity and we just need to step up we got a chance to go to Bryant uh, they're obviously still in it and playing for an NEC championship and uh, play our game and hopefully come out of there with a win and come home for the last time and in front of our home team or you know our home fans and, and win there as well but this week our focus is Bryant they're a good football team like I said they're tied for first they're playing for the NEC championship it would mean a lot to me uh, the coaches and hopefully our seniors to go up there and, and you know, get a win at their place and it's always special when a player who's put so much into the program is able to etch his place in the record books Tyler Duby did that this past weekend by uh, claiming the all-time touchdown reception record. He also ties Steve Tedesco uh, for the all-time touchdown record. What does that kind of accomplishment mean? You know, we were, we were talking about the it yesterday. Safety ESPN bearing down on them. Seen a uh, couple of great one-handed you know, catches today. This one just, of the end zone. That's that a two-handed catch. A and a catch. touchdown uh, for Tyler Duby. And the program tied. You know, he's watching tape. He's working out. He's catching passes. It's important to him. And to have him have that much success and uh, be the leader at our university and uh, again, a Before captain this stop. year, I, I couldn't be happier. And to have some sort He's of a chance a here. Do we try to get free? Noel finds him down the sideline. There goes Doobie all the way. way. And I know you love throwback yeah. football players. And isn't Moses Webb one? Yeah. Lining up on both <laughs> sides of the ball. Has to make you proud to see him step up in the face of adversity with the injuries to the defense. And he's done a really nice job at the cornerback position. And he's also doing a nice job, as we know he can, at the wide receiver position. Yeah, I mean, Moses is a great athlete. You know, if he was uh, either side of the ball, I think he's an all-conference type kid. Uh, last week, I gave him player of the week. Um, defensively, we had uh, eight tackles, two pass breakups and tackle for loss. And I think he had six catches for like 74 yards last week. So Moses has been a great, you know, a great kid, another kid that works hard and uh, just a tremendous athlete and does whatever we ask him to do. And um, anytime that you can play both sides of the ball in as many snaps as he did, it says a lot about your athletic ability and type of kid you are. And, you know, we go back two years ago in 2013, he's the one that made that play against Mammoth. you know. Right. They strip the ball from, he gets right back up off the ground, strips the kid, picks up and runs it back for a touchdown. So um, Moses has been a great kid and a great player, and I'm, I'm lucky to have him as a pioneer as well. All right, turning our attention forward to Bryant this weekend. The NEC selects your game against Bryant as what they call its wild card selection, meaning they've got that built in. They want to feature the feature game of the week. They select you and Bryant as that game. To get that kind of coverage on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app, what does that mean for you guys? Well, it says a lot about our program and where we've been the last two years. I know we've been on ESPN3 twice this year. Um, it's important. You know, I think it's great for our kids. and. It's great for the school that they recognize that, you know, we're still going up there. We're still playing hard. Our kids are giving the effort that they got. And, you know, the game means something still. You know, like I said, Brian's playing for an NEC championship and a shot to go to the playoffs. And it's our job to go up there and play our best, you know, put our best foot forward and play the game that I know we can play. And uh, it's important to the kids that, you know, we're getting some exposure still, even though we're not in the 
NEC crown right now or right run in and running for it. So, like I said, I, I like the idea that they're coming to the game. It's a noontime start, and hopefully it generates some excitement. And so, finally, let's look at Bryant. Both sides of the ball, can you give us a scout? Sure. Um, you know, offensively, they got, you know, a good quarterback, high percentage throws. Um, he's got a great receiver in Chad Ward. He's got a very good running back in Ricardo McRae. Um, you know, those three guys are the key to what makes them go offensively. Um, defensively, you know, they're always big up front. They're physical. They got two linebackers that can run, um, and they get, you know, pressure with the front four. Um, and they're a physical football team. You know, we have to, obviously, we got to control Chad Ward, the quarterback, and, and McRae, those three guys on offense. And then defensively, we've got to be able to run the ball and then, uh, you know, hold on to it and score when we get into the red zone. I mean, those are the keys to what we got to do if we're going to go up there and win the game. But I told the kids, you're in for a fight. You know, they're a physical football team. They've always been. They're well coached. Uh, Marty does a great job with them. Their special teams are good. Um, and we got to go up and play our game, and we can't hurt ourselves. We got to play the opponent, Bryant, and not play Bryant and ourselves. Very good, coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank Looking you. forward to it. Thanks. Thanks. Mark Nofried, the head coach of the Sacred Heart Pioneers, joining us as always. So it is Sacred Heart and Bryant coming up this Saturday at noon. We have the call for you on sacredheartpioneers.com. And as mentioned before, you can watch on ESPN3 or the Watch ESPN app.